For more on this groundbreaking procedure, we can cross to London and speak with Robin Lovell Bridges, the senior group leader and head of stem cell biology and developmental genetics at the Francis Crick Institute in central London. As we just saw in that report, Robin, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, now, well, this, is, yeah, <laughs> this is really cutting edge science that we're talking about here. Could you tell us a little bit more about how this procedure works? So, um, the, well, the issue is to do with mitochondrial disease. So, mitochondria are these little energy producing structures in all of our cells. Uh, they carry their own DNA. So, that's the only place you find DNA outside the nucleus of the cell, which is where the vast majority of the DNA is. Um, so, uh, if the, the DNA carries a mutation that affects the ability of the mitochondria to generate energy for a cell, then uh, that can lead to, to one of um, quite a few different um, diseases, which generally referred to as mitochondrial DNA diseases. And these can be devastating. So, uh, where, if you look at cells that have a high demand of energy, those things like muscle and brain cells, um, then you can imagine that um, children born with these diseases often, often uh, are very, very ill, uh, and they often die, and they can die any, any time from birth to you know, 18 years, 20 years, even a little bit older, and often suffer a lot uh, while they are alive. So it's horrible. Um, so the idea is to um, basically swap the mitochondria. So you have a, a donor egg, it's an egg from a donor, uh, which you remove its nuclear material. So you, you fertilize that embryo, you remove the maternal and the paternal uh, nuclear DNA, and then you put in the, um, the mother's, the maternal and paternal mother and father's uh, nuclear DNA, which is all packaged in these little structures called pronuclei, into the donor egg. So you've basically lost the vast majority of the, the, the mother's mitochondria mitochondria and mitochondrial DNA and replaced it effectively with that from the donor egg, which is, has normal mitochondria. And the evidence um, suggests, you know, there was good preclinical data to begin with. Uh, and now this is the first sort of set of uh, proper clinical data that we've had to look at and some follow up of the children born and say eight babies born. And they, they all appear to be uh, free from the mitochondrial disease or a chance of even or a chance of getting mitochondrial disease later. So it looks very, it's very, very good news. Now, uh, the process here, it involves gene editing. Is that correct, uh, CRISPR? No, it does not. Nope. No, I'd make it very clear. There's no, no gene editing. So you're not altering any specific genes in mitochondrial DNA and certainly not in the, um, in the nuclear DNA. Uh, you are swapping the mitochondria, basically. So you're taking, you're not changing any specific gene. Uh, it, the people have been thinking about using the CRISPR genome editing methods uh, to try and alter genes within the mitochondria, but that's very, very technically challenging, and the methods are not nowhere near uh, good enough or efficient enough or safe enough uh, to even attempt that. So this method, you're not altering any specific genes. You're swapping the whole mitochondrial DNA. The mitochondrial DNA is very small. It's a very small. Um, piece of DNA, carrying just a few genes, uh, all of which are involved in production of energy within cells. So they don't, they don't carry any traits that you might recognize in people like, you know, hair color, eye color, whatever. Um, so nothing to do with that. Uh, thanks. I was, uh, that, that was a question that I had because the procedure is obviously the law had to change in the UK for this uh, to be able to happen. It's banned in the United States. It's banned here in France. Uh, I think maybe possibly over concerns that you could start having designer babies, as I, some critics have uh, referred to it. It was mentioned in the report there. Um, with this, with these successful births, could we see that attitude change? Well, so in the in the UK, we're lucky in the way that we may have definitions of, of an embryo and of um, what would count as um, uh, a sort of genetic or gene alteration. So we're not talking about altering any genes here, we're altering about just swapping things. So um, th the methods you refer to, like altering genes in the nucleus using genome editing, 
are illegal in the UK as well. So uh, you, you, in the UK, we're not worried about like a slippery slope to, to doing things that people might get even more nervous about. Um, so I don't see that there's um, an issue here really at all. You're, you're just allowing women who, who are, you know, desperately want to have their own genetically related child. So they don't want to use other methods like adoption or embryo donation or egg donation. Uh, they want to have their own genetic child. Often they have had other previous children uh, and usually only know that they are at risk of having a, a, genetic, um, a child with a mitochondrial disease because they've already had an affected child or um, a, a sister has had an affected child or something. So um, it, you're just talking about a restricted number of, a limited number of, of cases where this could be done. Now, the methods could be used um, to treat less serious cases of mitochondrial disease. So the law in the UK specifies it has to be serious. It's, there have been um, attempts to use the methods to try and treat certain forms of female infertility. Uh, again, that's not legal in the UK because there's no evidence that that would work. There's no understanding of why it would work. But it has been done, carried out, for example, in a trial involving um, scientists in, uh, in, in Spain and Greece. Um, so there are potential uses of the technology, but they're all quite restricted and nothing to do with um, the sort of design a baby um, issues that you mentioned. And with the, uh, I want to ask you just one uh, final question here. With the success of this uh, specific procedure, do you think um, everyone is ready to revisit the debate surrounding potential scientific ways of using stem cells to uh, work and cure diseases or mutations or or anything else like that so so my my role in a lot of this story is not i'm not you know i'm not directly involved in in doing any of the work um, on, on these patients embryos for example uh, my role has been to advise scientifically and to help steer the the regulatory pathway for this so that it, that it's it can be done carried out in the uk and yes absolutely it's time to be debating all of these issues the more they're debated, um, uh, the, the better will would be any regulation that come, comes um, out of it. So the, you know, even things like uh, genome editing could potentially be very, very important and used to avoid um, serious genetic diseases due to, due to uh, well, abnormal genes within the, um, the nuclear DNA. But we can't do any of this unless we have a proper debate about whether it is at all acceptable and uh, how you limit it. You've got to have good regulatory processes where you can restrict any potential uses to those which are really serious and important and, and not do uh, things which are um, going to worry people like, as you say, designer babies. Yes, I guess uh, that, that is one of the concerns here. Um, we don't want the scientists, uh, sci scientific stuff to be misused uh, in this situation. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for joining us. That's Robin Lovell-Badges from the Francis Crick Institute in central London.